Hello and welcome to TFA Analysis. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Chris Anu, a biological brother to Phil Marshall, Oliver of Red Dragon, Libya Line, received his brother was not killed by the military of the Cameroon government. That his brother was not killed by an Amazonian fighter from ADF. As many people were saying that he was killed by General Eva of ADF. That his brother was not killed by ADF. That his brother was not killed by the population of Libya. Line. That his brother was killed by ex amber fighters. And if he say ex amber fighter in his narrative, he says that what they came together with military in which the military it, it did not go right into the forest. Many they are a, a, a Amazonian fighter who surrendered to the government and were taken to DDR center. And if the government used them to kill um, a, a, a few masha FM. Meaning the objective of creating the DDR center can never be fulfilled. Because the government took these guys and told us that they will be transformed. They are taking them to DDR center to transform their mentality before integrating them into the society. Now they are still using them to fight. They are still in that spirit of fighting, in that spirit of killing. Meaning nothing has been done in the DDR center. Many those are people uh, that maybe the government will be training them or will just gather them somewhere and be using them to kill other people who are against the government. Maybe that will be a new military group that the government of Cameroon will create. I wish you to drop your comments concerning this particular question. What is the purpose if truly the government used this guy to kill other Amazonian fighters or to kill a, 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 a few masha of Libya line, then what is the objective? What is the real objective of DDR center? Is it what the government told us? Or they have a hidden agenda behind? And if it is what they told us, will they achieve it if they keep on using these people to kill others? Listen to Chris Arnold as he directs narrates how his brother was killed. ...was gone down, gone down. On the evening of Tuesday, July 12th, at around between 5 and 6 p.m. Amber time. But let me make this very clear. FMA wasn't killed by the Republic of Cameroon occupying soldiers in Libya. Though they haunted him for years, he refused to fall under the barrel of your violence. To FMA, La Republic du Cameroons are mere boy scouts and cowards, lacking the skills, the courage, and the mastery of warfare capable of taking him down. FMA was not killed by ADF fighters either. Some conspirators in the social media have painted that narrative Maybe, maybe just to further set divisions among us. None should fall for that. The ADF had no rule in the murder of Fiamasha of Ambazonia. Fiamasha's fighters, the Red Dragons, have no accomplices or hands whatsoever in the plot that cut down the life of Fear Masha of Ambazonia. We can authoritatively say that they are all innocent. They have been taken aback just as every, everyone else. The people of the BLM didn't kill their Fear Masha either, contrary to the social media. In situations like this, we must be careful to separate patriots from villains. The overwhelming population of the BLM, both in the diaspora and at home, stood with the Masha of Ambazonia morally, materially, and financially throughout the time 
the time that God's grace abound upon him to fight. To suggest that the BLM people killed him is an overstatement and tantamount to painting all with a broad brush. So then, who killed Fee Masha? I guess you all want to know. The people who killed Phil Masher were hired assassins. And yes, they all hail from the BLM. But like Judas Iscariot, they choose money over honor. Like Judas, they were paid from both home and abroad to carry out the deed. Let me state very authoritatively, ladies and gentlemen, that at this moment, as I come to you, we are not only informed of exactly how it all went down, we now know every single collaborator, but particularly to the individual actors who carried out the execution. We know all of their names, their pictures in the bush, where they come from, who sent them, and who paid them. Let me assure all of you that we have nowhere to hide in Ambazonia and in La Republic du Cameroon. I'm not going to name them here on television, but trust that they will be named as we lay hands on them one after another. Villagers first spotted them the previous evening, being Monday, July the 11th, as they made inroads into cocoa farms in the vicinity. But the villagers took them for Amber Restoration Forces, or the Red Dragons, because according to the villagers, they were all dressed up looking like Amber Boys, as they called the Restoration Forces. They were all tatterly dressed and having the appearance of the ARF. Even so, there was an element of strangeness in their appearance. They looked suspicious. The villagers raised an alarm to some fighters who made frantic searches but didn't find them. The following morning, Big Tuesday, Tuesday, the day of the execution, July 12th, at around 9 a.m., they emerged from their hideout, picked up two former fighters, um, uh, dragon fighters. One had long laid down arms since 2018, and the other had left the camp only two months. The assassins were four, four of them in number at this point. And all the four, have at one time or another been fighters of the Red Dragons. But they had all left the struggle for a period ranging from one and a half year to four years to become black legs, joining ranks with the Republic of Cameroon bees for all these years. After picking up the two escorts and having them severely tortured their hands tied behind their backs, a piece of cloth wrapped in the mouth of the order. They hurled him behind the building and demanded that he must lead them to FMA's location. I will spare you all of the details here. As they took off for Fee Masha's location, the four assassins were now joined at this time by four orders disguised equally as amber boys with face masks. These ones were La Republic to Cameroon soldiers, four of them. The entire team was now ten in number, that is including the two escorts. We gathered that somewhere close to Fear Masha's location all the four Larva Plato Cameroon mass soldiers decided to stay back. They won't go up to FMA's location. 
the four former ambers proceeded, avoiding all the traps and camps in the area and surprising FMA from the direction he least expected. They gunned him down from a distance like a, sni a, sni a sniper. He slumped backward and fell on his back. After observing he wasn't going to wake up, it was then they now walked to the scene and smashed his face. After the mission was accomplished, the assassins radioed the four air ROC Republic soldiers waiting down the forest. Jubilation started. The rest of the dragons, hearing the sound of the first gunshot, began mobilizing from their nearby bases to that location. The first person to show up was ambushed and killed, slaughtered. The rest found a way of escape. Immediately, the Larabopoli to Cameroon army, hiding in the forest, alerted their bosses. The assassins, too, began to call their friends and collaborators around Larabopoli, their fellow blacklists and enablers, to report their exploits. And the enablers immediately took it to the social media, putting out this story. Unfortunately, for the assassins, their collaborators, the same collaborators, would not hide their identities. By Wednesday morning, the 13th of July, over 400 occupying soldiers of the Republic had descended on the outskirts of the vicinity FMA had been located. They had mobilized in the hundreds to secure safe landing for the helicopter that will transport, transport the remains of the of, of Fimasha to Kumba. Upon landing in Kumba, they took the body to the military barracks before driving it in a parade for public view at what is called the Sec Junction. And that was FMA's last journey, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed very difficult for me to narrate this story.